If you are in the market for a new Venezia FC jersey, then you are most likely well aware that something special is happening in Venice. Unfortunately for you and countless other supporters, these jerseys have virtually been sold out this entire season. The secret is out. These kits are fantastic. In fact, the demand is so high that they are selling countless replicas all over the internet. But for a club that recently got promoted in the top level of Serie A, fashion isn't their only focus. Instead, staying in the first division, avoiding relegation is the name of the game for Venezia. So for this, the club is turning to another import in increasingly high demand, the American player. Venezia's eccentric jerseys are only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the strange past this club has endured. I could legitimately produce an entire episode on the oddities surrounding this club, but for your sake, we will focus and condense it and work our way up to present day. First thing to know is that the club was established in 1907 as Venezia Football Club. For the next 80 years, they would operate under this name until the club merged with Venetian mainland club AC Mestri in 1987. It was at this time that the now famous orange, black, and green came into existence. One would imagine that this merger would bring on sustained success, but it was really quite the opposite for Venezia FC. It would take Venezia another 10 years to reach the top flight of Italian football, ending a 31-year drought. Over the next three seasons, the club would be up and down, and following the 01-02 campaign, Venezia would see its second relegation to Serie A Bay in just three years. It was at this time that then-club director Maurizio Zapparini would exit following the club's relegation. The same owner who purchased the team in 1987, following the merger, grew unhappy with the club's progress. The final straw was the city's lack of progress in planning applications for a new stadium. Zamparini wouldn't go quietly into the night, instead it was quite the opposite, quite infamous. In one final vindictive move, Zamparini immediately signed 13 members of the quad left behind at Venezia, including several stars such as Filippo Maniero, Daniel Anderson, Joaquin Bjorklund, and Stefano Moroni. His move to Palermo left behind a fledgling club, one that could no longer stand unsupported. At the end of the 0405 Serie A base season, Venezia were relegated and fell into bankruptcy. After this, the club was refounded and admitted into Serie A C2. This is the fourth division. The club would earn promotion to Serie A C1 in 05 06 season and spend the next three seasons in the third tier. But Venezia would be declared bankrupt once again by the end of the 08-09 season. Do you see a trend here? It got so bad, so bad that Venice was in danger of being a city without a football club. But Venice's mayor, Massimo Cassiari, would not allow it to happen and he supervised the foundation of what he believed to be a better, newer club. This government-backed Venezia FC would unsurprisingly last just two seasons in the third tier before going bankrupt for the third time in 10 years. So this is when the Americans come in. And no, we have not gotten to Busio, Tessman, and De Vries yet. This is still five to six years off. It really wasn't until 2015 that a group of American investors acquired the club out of bankruptcy. Venice would soon earn promotion to Serie A Bay and even flirt with the possibilities of promotion to the top flight. So now, five years later, we reach 2020. In February of that year, Venezia owner Duncan Niederauer reorganized the club and took on the role of president. Now I'm going to completely skip over COVID here, so keep in mind that at this point, Venezia FC is in Serie A Bay and in the 2020-2021 season, a resurgent Venezia finished fifth in Serie A Bay and thereby qualified for the promotional playoffs. The club would advance to the playoff final where they would face Citadella. Down a goal and down a man in the first half, Venezia's 10-man side fought valiantly into the second half. In the 93rd minute, veteran striker Ricardo Bacolon struck an equalizer to secure Venezia's return to Serie A for the first time in 19 years. Instead of the typical bus patrolling through the streets in a parade procession, being Venice, the players took to the gondolas in the most unorthodox yet quintessential Venetian way. The players celebrated on boats through the canals of their city. So now that you've met Duncan Niederauer, you might have an idea why there are so many American players at Venezia. Well, as of right now, there are three. Meet Tanner Tessman, Gianluca Puccio, and the newest addition is a 19-year-old MLS Loney from the Philadelphia Union. Jack DeVries. 
For a club that just secured promotion in Italy's Premier Division, it certainly seems odd to sign three young Americans to compete with the likes of Juventus, AC Milan, Roma, Inter, and other Italian giants. Or does it? There seems to be a sense of optimism at Venezia. When asked about the jersey design, American Chief Marketing Operator Ted Filipaco stated, and I quote, We could have easily continued to do what I think tons of relatively small clubs do. They just take what their technical supplier gives them, and they put their badge on it, and project done, you're ready to go, end quote. Likewise, Filipakos also acknowledged that something special is building in Venice. There are people on our team that essentially pulled off a miracle. It's only fitting because Venice itself is a miracle. None of this stuff is supposed to be here. Maybe for many Italian supporters elsewhere in Syria, ah, these American owners, or these three young American players, are also not supposed to be there. But in a city that has seen its 114-year-old club rise from Syria D to Syria A in the span of six seasons, a club that has survived a devastating tornado, three bankruptcies in 10 years, and the infamous heist of half the team, for once, maybe these Americans are welcome in Italian football. Their success on the field wouldn't certainly be the most mystifying thing we've seen in Venice. For now, they're here to stay, and I feel that there will be many more in the future making the jump Syria ah.